Hi guys and welcome back to JavaScript Playground. In today's video, we will talk about form related events. These are all the available form events. So we've got change, focus, blur and submit. This change function is called when the content of an input element is changed or when the user selects a value from a dropdown or a user selects a date from a date picker, etc, etc. So basically, whenever the value changes for an input element, then this change event is triggered. The focus event is triggered when the input field is focused by the user. The blur event is triggered when the input field loses focus. And the submit event is triggered when the submit button is clicked by the user. Let's try an example to understand these better. Let's start with the change event. So let's say we have this form and we want to listen to the value changes in the username field. So coming here. So this username field has an ID username. So let's select this element first. So where say username and to select this element, we need to use get element by ID, which is a DOM method. So DOM dot get element by ID. Let's pass the value here. Let's do console log. So just to confirm whether we've got this element or not. So coming here, inspect and console. So as you can see, we've got this entire input element selected. Now we've already learned to add an event. We can either use the event property or we can use the add event listener. So let's use the event listener here. Add event listener. And this accepts two arguments. First is the type of event. So in our case, it is change and it accepts a function. So let's create an anonymous function for this. Let's just print log value changed. So every time the value changes in username input field, it will print in the console that the value changed. All right, so let's check it in the console. So coming here, right click, inspect and console. So when I change a value here, say apple, it prints value changed. Similarly, if I make it something else, say cafe, it again prints value changed. So we've got this two here, that means this is printed twice. Similarly, if I change it to root, it goes to three. So if you notice, it doesn't listen to every single change in the input element value, but instead it gets updated only when we go to the next view, say admin, and it gets updated. But if we keep changing the value, it doesn't get updated. Now to listen to every value change, we can use another event listener called input. So instead of this change, we can write input here. So coming back. And now, as you can see, as I keep writing or as I keep updating this value, it triggers this event value changed. All right. So let's say we wanted to access this value. So whatever is written here, we wanted that to be printed in the console. So for that, event handler functions are passed in argument, the event object. This object holds additional information about the event. For example, if we want to know which element triggered the event, we can use the target property, which is available in this event object. Or if we want to know which mouse button was pressed, we can look at the event objects button property. So let's give this a try. So coming here, so this event listener, it passes the event object here. So we can simply write event. And now we have access to this event object inside the event handler. Say we wanted to know which uh, HTML element triggered this event. So what we can simply do is event dot target. Let's save it coming here. And when I change the value here, it prints the element which triggered this event. So in our case, it is this username input field. So coming here now, instead of this, just knowing the target, say we wanted to access the value. So we could do target dot value. Let's say that. 
and as you can see it's printing whatever value is inside the input box now let's say every time someone enters a value we want it to be uppercase so let's do that so let's store this updated value in a variable say current value So now the current value will be stored in this current value variable. Now to make it uppercase, we have this inbuilt function to uppercase. So let's try that to uppercase. All right, so let's check our console. Okay, so it's giving us an error to uppercase is not a function. So coming back. So this C needs to be capital. So the function is to uppercase and this string or in camel case. Let's try again. So even when I write apple in lowercase, it gets converted to caps. Now to update the value of this username, we can update the value property. And to access a property, we can do selected element dot property name, which is value. So let's pass this current value here. Let's save it. And as you can see, whatever I write is written in all caps. So this is just one use case. You can have multiple use cases. Say for example, you want to put a condition here that username can only be alphabets and numbers. So you can check if the entered string only contains alphabets and numbers and if it contains something else you can show an error etc etc there are many use cases all right so moving on let's try the next event which is focus so when someone clicks here so this input element is focused right now so let's try to listen to this event so coming back so let's say username dot add event listener all right so the event name is focus Let's create an anonymous function. Let's print it in the console. Element focused. Let's save it and come in here. And now when I click here, it prints in the console element focused. As you see, when I click inside the element, it gets focused and it gets printed in the console. Similarly, the next event is blur so this blur event is triggered when the input field loses focus so let's give that also a try so let's say username dot add event listener the name of the event is blur so let's write that and it accepts a function so let's create an anonymous function here let's print it in the console say element lost focus Let's save it and come in here. So now when I click here, the element gets focused. But now when I click somewhere else, somewhere outside the element, it loses the focus. And we get this message printed in the console element lost focus. So that's how you can use focus and blur event. So moving on, the next one is submit event. So this is triggered when the submit button is clicked by the user. So coming here, so we've got an ID for the form, login form. Let's select it. So var login form document dot get element by ID and login form. So now we have access to this form and we can listen to the submit button click. All right, so let's give it a try. So login form, so selected element dot add event listener. So the name of the event is submit. Let's add an anonymous function here. Let's print in the console, submit button clicked. So come in here. Now when I click on the login button, it doesn't print submit button click because submit happens when all the fields are filled and valid and the name value pairs are added in the url so that's the submit event so right now 
the submit event is not triggered, although we did click on the login button. And this username is a required field, so that's why the submit event did not trigger. So let's add it. Let's add a password. And now when we click on the login button, it refreshes the page, so that's why we don't see it in the console. So instead of printing in the console, let's do alert. Let's save it. So coming back, let's give it a password and hit the login button. And now, as you can see, it shows an alert submit button click. And when all the fields have valid values, it takes all the name value pairs and appends it in the URL. So as you can see here, we've got username, the value, password, and the value. Let's say we don't want this. Let's say we don't want this default behavior of the submit button click. So to overwrite that, this event object gives us another method called prevent default. So let's give it a try. So coming here, let's say now to access the event object, we have to first pass it as an argument here. So say e dot prevent default. Let's say that. So what's happening here is when the button gets clicked, we prevent the default behavior of this button click or default behavior of this submit button event. All right, so let's check it. So let's give it a username, a password, and let's click this login button. So it shows us an alert submit button click, but the page did not get refreshed and these values did not reset. So we removed the default behavior of the submit event. There are a lot of events available in JavaScript and in the coming videos, we will only learn about the most commonly used events. I will add the link to a reference list of all the events available in JavaScript in the description below. Please check it out. And that's a wrap for today.